Hey, and welcome to this intro tutorial for Mari. So due to a lot of people not knowing how to use Mari, I thought it'd be helpful to add a little tutorial like this in here to just give you a brief overview. Um, most 3D softwares have uh, more tools in them than most people end up using, me included. And so I'm just gonna be showing you the primary tools I use when when I'm texturing in Mari. So to kick things off, I'm gonna show you how to bring in this default template. So you should have downloaded it from the Gumroad links and then I can go open archive here. And then here we have the default template. So I'll hit open and you'll see that it'll just load in here. And then we have default template number two because I already have one in loaded in. And then you just double click on that. Okay, so here we are in Mari. Um, now this is my custom layout. Yours won't look like this, but I'll show you how to set it up so it does. So first of all, let's go up to view and then you have display properties. So first of all, I think by default, the grid is turned on. I turn that off. Um, selection, you can change these if you would like. Uh, all it means is, for example, when I'm selecting an object, if I hold down S and select an object, it'll highlight green like this. But if we go to view display properties, you can set fill render to never. And then instead you just get a very like light outline, green outline. Um, it, that, that's personal preference really. Uh, sometimes I have it on, sometimes I don't. At the moment, I'm just gonna leave it on. Everything else is pretty basic. It was mainly the grid that we wanted to change here and then hit OK. Now, uh, to navigate in Mari, you can update this by going to Edit Preferences. And I do this straight away whenever I do a fresh install of Mari. We go to Navigation and then um, Control Type. Oh. It's dropped out, it should be set to Maya here. So set that to Maya. And then orbit, look to world up and center mode selection. I find this works best. Otherwise it's a little bit, um, I find it a little bit difficult to navigate uh, the viewport. So hit okay. Now these are called palettes. So we have node properties, image manager, objects and node graph. These are all docked over here. If I hit this button, it'll pop out and show me the names of all the palettes. And then when I'm not using it, I can pop it in and then it gives me a bit more real estate in the viewport. So image manager is basically uh, just where I can bring in textures that I wanna use on my surfaces. A really easy way to bring those in rather than like hitting this button and navigating, you can literally just click and drag a texture in here like so. You can also, if you want, you if you have textures that you use quite often, you can have them loaded in here and then you can save your own version of the template which so you don't have to always keep bringing in the same maps. Uh, then we have node properties. Uh, so the node properties is basically information on any node that you double click on. So here we have a... Uh, just a paint node and it has the information of that paint node. This is a bake node and then the bake node has tabs. So we'll be going into these nodes and, and how they work and, and what ones are important uh, in the tutorial. So yeah, that's about it for the node properties. It's just a preview uh, palette. Then we have object and in the first tutorial, I think I'll be showing you how to bring in your asset to texture, but this is where you basically manage any objects that you bring into the scene for texturing. So to bring these over onto the side here like this, all you need to do is you like open it up like so and then you just grab it from the top and then drag it over and drop it when it gets highlighted to wherever you want it to go. You can even put it on this side if you want. But yeah, it's up to you. You can also pin these so they're just like a floating window and then it won't disappear. If you untick the pin, it'll disappear. Okay, so yeah, that's about it for the palettes. One other one which I recommend is probably the tool properties. This is just where you can update brushes and change their settings. You just need to have a play around in this one. So when it comes to hotkeys, so Alt, um, Alt middle mouse is a uh, pan, Alt, uh, left click is to rotate orbit 
and alt right click is to zoom in and out so pretty simple um navigation uh basically the same as maya so yeah that's easy then um some really handy um hotkeys is j so this just quickly allows you to select a color rather than coming over here and opening it um k is your shelf so that's basically this here but rather than coming down here and having this here and then it disappearing you can just hold down k and then this allows you to navigate to whatever brush you want you'll see me using this quite often and then l is uh your image manager i still like having the image manager up here to like drag images into it but it's easy to get to do some really quick selections of um of your textures uh by just holding down l so yeah, they're probably my primary hotkeys. Uh, number hotkeys just gives you front, back, side. This um, object isn't perfectly centered. I think it's rotated 45 degrees, so it's not working as you would expect. But um, yeah, the number keys just help you snap to an, uh, basically an orthographic view. Uh, and in talking about orthographic view, you have like a bunch of tabs up here. So ortho is the orthographic view. Then you have perspective, which is perspective. For some reason, I just prefer working in orthographic view, uh, but it's up to you. Um, and then you have ortho UV, which I almost never use because I just either go to UV or I go to ortho, one or the other. And so this is your UVs here. Okay. So now onto these tools uh, on the left. So this top one is just selection. So I never click this button, I just hold down S. And if I had more than one object in here, I'd be able to like select other objects. So right now this is not selected. And then if I click it, it is selected. So pretty simple. Um, then the, the next one down is the painting brush, hotkey P, which once again, I use all the time. So like if I have this selected, and then I want to go back to painting. I just hit P on the keyboard and now we're back to painting and we no longer see that selection highlight. Now the next one down uh, is paint through. You obviously also have like gradient and clone stamp. Uh, these are pretty self-explanatory from um, Photoshop, but paint through is quite important. Uh, what it allows you to do is if I drag this image in and then hold down control shift to resize it, I can then project, making sure, oh, I'm not on a paint node. Actually, yeah, I'm not on a paint node. If I just select this AO, yeah, you can see there, I'm painting onto the surface and then I hit Alt and I can bake that down. And yeah, you can see this is my AO. Now you can see here that I've projected through the object and this is very important to learn um, that through down here is selected. So that means if I have an object selected and the patch on the other side is also selected, it's going to project straight through the object. So to stop that from occurring, you can turn through off and then let's make sure we have that selected. Oh, and project through the texture. And now you'll notice that that hasn't come through. Okay. So pretty, pretty simple. Now the warp tool is a tool that I use quite often. So I can drag in my texture once again, uh, and then I can paint this down. I'm gonna hold down K to get a hard brush, and then I can paint on this. And whatever I've just painted, I can then warp. So you'll notice this brush stroke won't move, but this one will because I've only just applied it without baking it down yet. And so then I can, um, basically stretch and fill this as much as I want. Um, you can use the arrow keys up and down to reduce or increase the resolution of the warp depending on what you're trying to do. So this is super helpful, super useful. And I hit Alt there and now it's baked down as you can see. Okay, so that's the warp, marquee select, uh, text, eyedropper, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, color selection. Now this is important. This is uh, the the set selection mode. So right now it's set to patch. 
You also have object mode, which is basically just the whole object, which I never ever set it to. I, I always just have it set to either patch or face mode. Now face mode is really helpful when you're trying to isolate and select a certain area to texture without influencing another region. And the way this works is if I hold down S, you'll see this all change up here. And by default, it'll be set to marquee selection, but you can also set it to this one. You can also use these two, but I either use marquee or smart selection mode. And then by default, this will be set to connected meshes. And then if I come in here and select, you'll see that it's selected this part, but not this part because they are not connected meshes. Uh, and then you can also do UVs. And so I can like select this area here and it's only selected that UV shell. So if I go to UVs, you can see here that that's the shell that I have selected. So now if I have it, I didn't really explain, but if I have it set to patch mode, if you have multiple patches, which my asset will, uh, which is also known as multiple UDIMs, this will allow you to select per UDIM uh, while working. It just makes things a lot easier. You'll see me do it multiple times through the tutorial. Uh, next up is how we're viewing the object. So if I come along here and view the shader again, basically I, I never really changed this at all. I just set it to use a shader, which is basically what this is here. And um, yeah, that's all, all I really need. I don't, I never, I never ever really changed this. This one is um, just basically how the assets being shaded. So full is giving us specularity you can see a subtle specular there as well as shadow basic is no specularity just shadow and flat is no shadow no specular so you'll see me shuffle through these now and again which um like depending on what i'm doing uh flat mode allows you to see the color in its raw state uh but sometimes you want to make sure that like your specularity is working with everything else. So having it on will be a good representation of how your model is going to render. And then the one under that is symmetry mode. Now, as I said, this object is rotated 45 degrees. It's not dead center to camera. So you can see there's a line here. And basically what that means is as I paint on one side, it'll appear on the other side, just as long as your asset is centered and relatively symmetrical. So I can turn that off. Uh, this is an old version of um, sym symmetrically painting, but it's um, it's not very good in comparison. So I, I, I never use this anymore. And then this button here is uh, clearing the paint buffer. So if I go back to viewing that AO that I had before and I paint on the surface, let's hit X on the keyboard to switch to black. Now, if I don't move the camera, which bakes it in like so, um, I can hit this button here and it just clears it. So if I made a mistake and I'm like, whoops, I don't want to bake that down, you can either go and control Z, but actually if um, your scene is quite heavy, it actually can be faster just to hit this button here. So, or if you've done like heaps of work and you don't want to like undo 50 times, you can just hit that button. So it's pretty handy. One last thing is probably going into painting here. Uh, so when I was talking about like moving the camera and it bakes, you have projection. So you have bake behavior. I can't remember what the default is. I think it might be manual. If it's set to manual, what that means is if you project on and then move the camera, it's not going to bake down until you hit B on the keyboard. And then you can see it's baked and then it'll stay there. And I can hit B again. So this can be helpful in some scenarios, but I've personally never used it. And then to get rid of it in the end, you can hit that button there and then it's gone. But the way I prefer to work is instead of manual, you also have clear only, which I think means that it clears every time. I just like to have auto bake and clear. And what that means is if I bake if I paint on the surface, as soon as I move my camera, it's just going to bake down automatically. So, yeah, I just find that much more intuitive and less buttons to click. You also have masking in here. So what this does is, like, you can turn on a fractal noise. Uh, 
and then make sure that you mask preview enabled. And so then you have a noise here, so then I can project, bake down, and then if I go back to paint and turn that off, you can see I've projected through a noise directly. So you can do things like that, which is super helpful. Also have a depth mask, a back face mask. Uh, so if you want to be working with project through turned on, uh, but you don't want to affect the other side, you can turn on, um, turn that on. You have edge masking, which is quite cool. So what that does is basically it gives you a fall off on the edge. So if I project here, and bake it down and then we go back in and turn that off you can see it's like just faded out but I had through turned on so it's gone through obviously but yeah if if I didn't have through turned on it'd just be a nice fall off there whereas you can see here I didn't have that mask turned on and so I've gotten this really stretched tear in my um, textures uh, but I to tell you the truth, I rarely use these. I don't use them at all through this tutorial, but it's just good to know that they're there. So for other things, you can have a look around, but that's basically it. Uh, I'd also check this paint buffer and the buffer size. I actually usually have this set to 4K. This all got reset at some point. So yeah, setting the buffer to 4K, color depth, 16-bit, and you'll be good to go. So lucky I, I checked that and showed you guys. All right. Well, yeah, that's about it. Um, I can go back here and uh, it's one on the keyboard to view something in the um, in node graph. And if you want to disable something, you hit D and then you just hit D again to re-enable it. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, anything else I, I will be going over in the tutorial, but I just wanted to give you a quick little overview of the interface here just so it's not too... Um, intimidating for you. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and good luck.